Hello, this is Wayne Moore again, this choir master, choir director. And uh, today we're going to look at um, warm ups. Warming up is necessary for any kind of athletic activity. And uh, singing is as athletic as they come. You may see people singing and think it's just a walk in the park, but singing is a very athletic activity, it involves the entire body. Some people think that the, the whole body is really the voice. You know, you have to take care of the entire person in order to take care of the voice. We know the voice is, the vocals reside here in the larynx, but the whole body has to support a mechanism to produce that voice. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with stretching. And I'm going to keep them simple. There's, we're not going to have a lot of different things because we just keep it simple. So stretching, upward stretching. You're going to inhale, raise your arms while you're counting and get to the, raise your arms above your head and then bring them back down while you're holding your breath and so on. So let me show you how, that, how that's done. So you're going to inhale and while you inhale, you'll raise your arms and you're inhaling and you're inhaling and you're inhaling and then your arms straight over your head like this and you're inhaling. Hold your breath as it gets there. And then you're going to bring your arms down and keep your breath in. You're not exhaling, keeping it in and arms come right back down to the side. And while it's at your side, you still hold it and then you exhale and release. Now, not so fast. We have to count. So this is where the exercise comes in. We're going to do it again. And this time now we're going to count as we go up. So we count on the count of eight. So we count to the number eight. We start one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you're inhaling at, at that time. When you get to the top, you still have your breath in, you're not breathing out, and you're counting to eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring your hand back down again, still holding your breath, counting to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the hands are by your side. Still counting eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you exhale. Sounds like a lot, but it, it happens in a smooth sequence. So you do everything in one go and you're counting in your mind. You can't physically count because then you're going to lose your breath. So you inhale up, hold, come back down, still holding, relax your hands at the side, still holding, and then you exhale. And you will notice when you inhale, and you're up at this position, you will have filled your lungs. And because you have raised your arms, the lungs are filled a little more than they normally would if your arms are by your side. So when you bring your arms back down, you can feel that sense of fullness across your chest and so on. You feel that uprightness and that kind of buoyant stand, as I call it, buoyant stance. And uh, when, you're, when you have finished and you're exhaling, you must keep your chest up and allow the exhale to take place from your abdomen. So when you breathe out, the abdomen comes in. That way the chest maintains its upward stance. You don't want your chest to collapse like this. Keep it up, okay? All right, so that is how it's done. And it's eight counts up and down. And what you do is each time you repeat this exercise, you try to add two counts. So you go from eight to 10 to 12 to 14 and up to whatever you can manage depending on you, the person, or the group that you're coaching and so on. And uh, that's a good way to wake up the body. All right. Uh, next, we can do an exhale now on a sound of TSS. That sound. So you're going to inhale and then you exhale. But while you're doing that now, you're counting. And you start by counting to 10 and then... When you get to 10, you, all the air must be out. You should start, let's say start here, and by the time the hand gets to 10 there, there should be no more breath left to push out. So you're going to deliberately try to dump all the air out by the time you get to 10. Now, uh, you extend that. So you start at 10, and then 12, 14, 16, etc. And that will be how you create that exercise for yourself because you're managing your breath at extended intervals. So... You allow it to exhale completely at eight. So you go.
and it's done. You extend it to 10, and the same thing happens, and you're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Or you can have somebody count for you. Or if you are directing a group, you count for them, and they do the exhaling. So uh, that is also a way of managing your breath, because you're going to feel that the pressure, the push is coming really from your abdomen and not from up your chest. Push is coming from down here. And that will allow you to manage your breath that is better. Uh, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to get into some vocalizing, get our voice in there. And the first thing we're going to do is learn to hum. Now, to hum correctly, you're going to relax your jaw. Make sure your jaw is nice and relaxed. Your teeth are going to be apart, not touching. They're apart. These are my teeth, fingernail teeth. They're just apart. And the tongue is going to be not humped up in your mouth, but as low down as you can make it. So you're making a space in your mouth, almost as if you're yawning, but not quite. Don't yawn, just make the space. So you're going to hum, and when you hum now, you're going to feel that buzz along the lips, where the lips just touch, you're going to hold the lips hard, you're going to let them just, just touch. And you'll also feel that strong vibration in the forward section of your face, your, that we call that the mask resonance, you feel that vibration here it's like the sound is vibrating in your face it seems the sound is actually coming from here but it's coming up in a way that's vibrating in the bones and spaces in your sinuses and so on so you feel it up in your face and you're gonna start on the key of c that's our key so for the ladies or the men down here okay and uh, so we do a single vowel hum and you're gonna hum and count as well and you can count to whatever you feel like, count to, count to 10, count to 15, whatever, just to ensure that you get the hum right, okay? So, the idea is to do it like this. Got it? Or for the men. Basically, that's, that's the idea of it. And then you're going to move from C to D to E. The key going up here. All right. And so we want to do it like that for the first to get the voice. It's the first time the voice is waking up now for the, for the um, warm up. And then you can change the voice from other voice, sorry. So it becomes not just M mm now, but E or U. So you can go. Start with the M, mm, and then change it to E. So you go, me. So you've transferred from just humming now to making an actual vowel. Me or me. And you do the same thing. You're going to hold it and count and extend the count and change the key as well. Same pattern and go, you know, you can go up to whatever suits you. Um, but if, and depending on how much time you have. And then um, we're going to try a different approach now. This one is for the group. If you have a choir, a group of persons singing, what we're going to do is we're going to start by giving each voice line a note in the scale, in the chord. So if we're doing the key of C, that's the key. So we assign this note to the basses, maybe this note to the tenors. So the altos and the sopranos will get see that note for example. So it sounds like this. Okay. So the basses will sing me. Al tenors will sing me. The altos me. And the sopranos me. And we sing together. And we count while we're singing. Me, two, three, four, five, two, ten, whatever we, whatever suits us four, three, whatever it works. And then from there we can also change the key and do the same thing. Okay, the key, choir to sing. And then to add to that, we can also do an exercise called the Mesa di Voce, which is a great exercise for tone building. And uh, it helps, helps the members of the choir to really hear their voices and to control their tone and pitching. So the same thing. Now, 
this time you're gonna start softly and then you grow so it starts soft maybe maybe at let uh, at um, volume level P piano and then you as you hold the sound it gets louder and louder and louder until it gets to a peak and then it gets softer and softer and softer so that's what the mesa de voce is about it's an Italian term and it, it means that you're gonna start softly grow crescendo get to loud moderately loud and then you come back down to soft it's similar to how for example a, a train would pass or a car would pass a particular point and it goes mm. it's loudest right here softest there and softest there so for this thing tenor so you tenor would sing Except that it should be a full chord because the whole choir is singing. If it was mid just one, one, one line, you probably have you have the whole line singing, right? The whole choir singing, sorry. And uh, and those ex exercises will work. And the important thing is to make sure that while you are doing the exercise, these vocalizes, that you still maintain that facial resonance. That is important because that is going to add warmth and depth to the tone. And with the choir practices like that and warms up like that, they by habit, by muscle memory, the body will know to trigger that feeling, even when you're singing something completely different from what the warm up exercise is about. Just singing an ordinary song, even on your own, you you'll find that it will warm your tone and it'll give you a better sound at the end of the day. And um, so that is what uh, is a, these are simple um, warm up routines that you can follow, and you can take 15 minutes or so to do them. I just described it in about 12 or so minutes. So 15 minutes, 20 minutes will be good enough for your choir to warm. You don't have to do all of them all the time. Depends on what you're doing. If you're warming up in the evening from a, to, for a rehearsal, then it is uh, less likely that you're going to do all of them because you have been speaking and talking and, and singing maybe for the rest of the, for the um, previous part of the day. And on top of that, people may be just tired in the afternoon so you know doing a lot of stressful stretching and all that isn't helpful for rehearsal you get tired and you can't function in rehearsal so you have to look at the warm-up routine and see what is appropriate for the particular condition on a Sunday morning everybody's heading into the worship service then then you need a longer warm-up period because the worst thing you can do uh, if you are in a praise and worship setting is to get onto the platform there and start belting all these strong dynamic things you know these as i say electrified songs and do them before you have had any warm-up you're gonna hurt yourself you're gonna get hoarse and you're gonna um find that over time if you keep doing it that hoarseness will not go away because it's not just hoarse it's polyps and nodules and scars developing on your vocal folds and then you know if you have the money to go and do surgery you can do that but the average person doesn't you're gonna ruin your voice and you know that's really no fun so do warm up and um take care of your voice you know don't drink cold stuff before you're gonna um sing and um avoid being out late before you're going to sing because being late also makes the voice tired and once it, once it's tired it doesn't function so well you know if you take care of your voice um we'll do i'll do another video about taking care of your voice but um, just be, be sure that you don't stress your voice and then go and sing. That, that, that isn't going to work. And don't just get up and just start to sing stressful songs. Okay? All right, that's it.